So what do we do? We reduce barriers, ease burdens, and we deliver God's Word. We began in Peru uh, in the Amazon jungle and expanded from there uh, in 1948. And we work now currently and partner in South America, in Africa, in Asia, uh, Southeast Asia. And then of course we train here in North America. And so uh, we used aviation to uh, overcome those barriers, uh, to ease the burdens of, of movement, of transportation uh, in the country. The pilots and uh, mechanics and others that we train, they would uh, take a translator or a missionary uh, to a mountaintop jungle. Missionaries will go up there, they'll learn the language, they'll phoneticize it, they'll teach them to read, and then they begin to work with them and translate the scriptures. The aircraft uh, are very vital because for half your day you might be flying in the jungle and the other half of the day you may be flying up at six, seven, eight thousand feet trying to land on airstrips that are on the side of a mountain. We operate predominantly high-performance aircraft. Uh, the Helio Courier has been the bread and butter of JARS for many years with a tailwheel. Teaches so much good airmanship that we enjoy using that even for people who fly tricycle gear. That aircraft has a lot of history in our organization. It was one of our primary aircraft used on the field. Um, that aircraft is no longer being used operationally in the field, but it's still a good training tool. Uh, it's a great platform to do our, our technical evaluations in. The Healy Courier is unique. It was built from the ground up as a stole aircraft. Uh, it is a glycoming engine that's geared, so that gives you extra torque. Right, you're going to gear and have a bigger prop out there that you can swing. So the Helio Courier got a lot of its stole capability from uh, leading edge slats, um, and, and that was you know so it had some some aerodynamic tools to give you that. The Pilatus Porter, uh, the PC6, uh, which we have in Indonesia, we have four of them there, and so we have one of those here that we use as a training platform for those individuals going to Papua and uh, it's a great uh, stole uh, turbine aircraft. PC-6 gets its stole from just having a massive wing, <laughs> okay? The Robinson R-66 is amazing. The flexibility, the utility, and just that magic feeling of being able to lift into the air and go where you want, when you want, how you want, whether it's forwards, backwards, sideways, straight up. The so helicopter really is like an on-off switch to access and ability to impact the lives of these people for the better in these communities. Flight Span's a uh, software suite that we've put together uh, specifically to help mission aviation flight operations manage their flight operations both at the base level and uh, for the flight crews uh, in the cockpit. So we have to manage that own our, that data ourselves. Simple stuff like where is it? What are the coordinates? What's the length? What's the slope? What's the width? What are the hazards at that, that runway? It's now being used in uh, three organizations uh, overseas and then jars here and probably somewhere in the neighborhood of about 10,000 flights a year. Our goal here is to mostly train the next generation avi aviators to, to go overseas and uh, serve on the field. And so that, that involves a number of different things. A couple years ago, we started really focusing on what if we were willing to accept. We'll still evaluate people. We still want people that feel called to our mission, that, that, that love God, want to pursue this, and, and have really good attitudes and are teachable. But if they lack experience, that's OK. Maybe we can teach them. So the JADO program is something that we started to We'll, we'll still evaluate people, but if they're the right kind of person, we'll take them wherever they're at and we'll commit to training them to get them to the point where they need to be before they head overseas. At the end of my time here, they're going to be doing a technical evaluation um, and they've developed a training program throughout the year um, to kind of hit gaps I'm weaker in um, and also affirm the places I'm stronger in um, so that I can succeed and 
become a maintenance specialist in the field. We want to honor the past and provoke to the future. We're really in the autumn uh, of our days of having some of the original people back from the late 40s, early 50s when we began the organization that are still with us. But we also want to inspire to the future. Big push here at Chars is to get the next generation involved in it, and I really believe eVTOL is a, a platform, is a, a mechanism to generate that excitement again in aviation and and grow the next gen with some of what they're native to. Their, their native language is technology. Getting into uh, the overlap of technology and transportation together, particularly aviation, is, is where JARS wants to engage. And, and I think eVTOL is, is probably our next uh, big focus. Over the 75 years of JARS, there are so many stories of peoples with their lives changed, of communities changed. And, and the hope and the joy that you see when they have um, the joy of the Lord, the ability to understand um, more of who He is, is amazing. And I'm so excited to be a part of that. There's something about this organization that's special that makes people want to spend their entire lives working for that organization. Well, I'm really honored to come and be able to serve alongside here in this incredible organization.